Every year, over 250 million tires are used worldwide for various purposes, from transportation to industrial use. Tires are crucial for vehicles, helping them move smoothly and efficiently. But surprisingly, they can't be manufactured without this material, a white, sticky liquid that transforms into millions of tires each year. But have you ever wondered how tires are actually made? We visited one of the world's largest producers of natural rubber to discover how tires are manufactured. The wheel has been in use for thousands of years, but the idea of putting rubber on the outer edge is relatively new. It was in the early 18th century when natural rubber was first used to cover wooden or steel wheels. Since rubber wore out quickly, its future didn't seem very promising until, in 1839, Charles Goodyear discovered vulcanization a process where rubber is mixed with sulfur and subjected to heat and pressure, improving its plasticity and strength. This breakthrough paved the way for pneumatic tires, which could better absorb road bumps and provide improved traction. The tire is the only point of contact between the vehicle and the ground. Car tires have come a long way in the last century. Natural rubber is the main raw material used in tire manufacturing, although synthetic rubber is also used. Synthetic rubber is produced from the polymers found in crude oil. Today, large and efficient factories, staffed with skilled workers, produce over 250 million tires a year. India is one of the world's largest producers of natural rubber. They have been cultivating natural rubber trees for almost 100 years. The source of rubber is a milky liquid called latex, produced in the bark of the rubber tree. It consists of rubber molecules and water. Its function is to protect the tree from insects. To obtain it, care must be taken to cut only into the bark. If you go a couple of millimeters deeper into the wood, it could kill the tree. Fresh latex is poured into barrels with ammonia. This prevents the latex from clotting. At the factory, it undergoes a process to transform into solid rubber. Following a 10-hour expression period, the flexible latex is passed through a series of rollers to remove most of the excess liquid. Presses squeeze out excess water and turn the rubber into sheets. But to make the latex, it must be thoroughly dried. So the latex sheets are heated over firewood for three days, after which they can be called rubber. The methods they use have not changed in 100 years. Natural rubber is taken to the tire factory. In this factory, they have been manufacturing automobile tires since 1972. An automobile tire is made by wrapping multiple layers of rubber around a metal drum in a tire-forming machine. The different components of the tire are brought to the forming machine, where a skilled assembler cuts and positions the strips to form the different parts of the tire. Natural rubber is too elastic and flexible to make tires. It needs to be hardened. Rubber is mixed with various different components to give it the proper strength to manufacture tires. This modern tire is made up of between 10 and 15 different components, including natural and synthetic rubber, chemical additives, steel, sulfur, zinc oxide, textile fibers, and carbon black pigment. These ingredients are mixed under heat and tremendous pressure in giant mixers. The ingredients make the tire harder and more resistant to wear. There are several formulas for different parts of the tire. In each case, the result is a mass of sticky rubber that the machinery rolls into sheets to await further kneading and processing. In just over two minutes, a carpet of rubber compound emerges, ready to become the sidewalls and tread of a tire. The machine is equipped with rollers that apply hot rubber to both sides of the fabric. This produces a rubberized fabric that will be used to reinforce the tire. The fabric layer is necessary because rubber alone is not strong enough to make a tire. But you won't get very far driving with this. You need a strong inner lining called the tire casing. For this, the polyester sheet is introduced into a machine where heated rollers are applied. This is known as the second layer. Two layers are tightly wrapped over an airtight liner. They land at an angle and stick together. This creates channels that provide air ventilation during tire construction. Fine steel threads are attached, and the layer is molded around both sides. Above the layer, rubber-coated steel belts are added. These reinforce the tire and protect it from punctures. Now, the casing needs its skin, the part that grips the road. 
The rubber carpet that has come out of the trimming machine is now fed into an extruder. The rubber is heated and then forced through a die plate to give it the proper shape before cooling it and cutting it to the required length. Next, many steel cables are rolled at once to make the bead, the part of the tire that provides the necessary strength to stay on the rim. The machinery puts the cables in the desired configuration and wraps them in rubber. Another machine wraps the bead material into rings of the appropriate size for the rim. Now the tire is ready to be built using a special rotating drum. The two bead rings are placed on it. Next, a piece of hermetic rubber that will act as an air chamber is placed. The machine wraps the rubber around the bead on both sides and then they retract. This completes the inner part or skeleton of the tire. The outer layers are assembled separately, starting with rubber strips embedded in steel rings. Next, narrow rubber strips are placed. The computerized system rolls them with just the right tension to achieve a graduated effect. Now they are ready for the final stage. The tire tread rubber machine applies it to the layer. Compressed air inflates the tire to shape it and all layers are glued together. Rubber manufacturing for the tread requires three different rubber formulations. The structures shape the three rubber flows, which then enter a die that merges them into one. Paint rollers apply stripes of different colors. It's a coding system to identify ingredients during processing. The machine rolls the edge of the tread rubber onto the sidewalls. Now they have what is known in the industry as a green tire, an uncured tire with no tread pattern. The tire is placed inside a mold that clamps shut like a huge sandwich. This process is called vulcanization. At 180 degrees Celsius of temperature, pressure molds the rubber and transfers the tread pattern to the tire. The time spent in the hot, pressurized mold has caused the rubber to vulcanize, a chemical reaction that transforms it from a weak, sticky substance to a strong, elastic one. Excess rubber is trimmed. A blade cuts the tread rubber to size. After final inspections, it is confirmed that the tire shape is uniform and geometrically correct. Coming off the production line, from the trees to the sturdy wheels, these rubber tires are ready to hit the road. If you want to know how Doritos are made, watch the video on your screen and please like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might be interested. Also, subscribe to this channel by activating the notifications to continue learning. Thanks for watching.